everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we are making this one skein book sleeve. This has a book in it, so I want to show you. This is so cool, and I'll be sharing how to make this. I have a hardcover book in here, but you can use your uh, Kindle or your tablet or something and just keep your book nice and safe or your tablet screen nice and safe with a super soft yarn. Big thank you to Red Heart Yarns Yarn Inspirations for this hopscotch yarn. I am using the color Summer Salt in this tutorial today. This is um, a worsted weight yarn. It is a size 4 medium yarn. Very similar to like a double knitting type of yarn. Maybe an Aran yarn. It's kind of in between. It is a worsted weight. It is 100% acrylic yarn and it is a 4 ounce ball that's 113 grams. We aren't even using that much. We're going to be using uh, to about 200 yards, maybe a little less than that actually. So less than 200 yards. This is a 210 yard ball of yarn. So you can use this yarn or if you have a different skein of yarn that is less than 100 grams, you can make this exact book sleeve. So I'm really excited to share with you. We are working into the stitch and making this interesting looking kind of like a knit stitch look. It is so cool. And you're going to need a button. I have this super cool button from the Etsy shop Would Be Fancy. Actually, another thing from Would Be Fancy is the crochet hook that I'll be using. We are going to be using an H size crochet hook, which is five millimeters. And this fancy hook is hand carved ergonomic and it is so lightweight and nice to use when I crochet pieces like this. And so you can get crochet hook handles and buttons at the Etsy shop would be fancy. I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can shop there and get your crochet hooks and your buttons. You're also going to need a scissors and a yarn needle and your favorite book or a tablet to put inside of this sleeve. So before we begin, I have to let you know there are links in the description of this video, linked to the free crochet pattern that's on yarnutopia.com, and also there's a link to my Facebook group. We have a new Facebook group called Yarn Utopia World. Make sure you join that. We have fun events every month and uh, things going on there and get a lot of crochet inspiration from a lot of talented crocheters out there. You guys are wonderful. And uh, there's a link to my Snapchat and my Instagram. Make sure you're following me on both of those. So you can see the updates on what we do here at Yarn Utopia. Big thank you to Red Heart Yarns. Big thank you to my dad who's filming this tutorial <laughs> and posting it up on YouTube for everyone. And big thank you to you. Let's make the one skein book sleeve. All right, we're gonna start out with a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end, then fold this down and then pull your long end through and pull tight. Insert your hook and we can begin. So let's start off by chaining 26 or chain any amount that will fit the uh, length of your book. So yarn over and pull through. One, two, three. So I'm not going to make you watch me chain 26, but if you chain 26 or the amount that will fit your uh, length of your book, like the spine of your book, then do that and then I'll meet you right back here. Alright, I have my chain of 26 now. We are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and each chain across. So I like to turn the chain toward me like this and you can see these back ridges on the chain. I'm going to work through those loops, okay? So the second chain here, the loop on the hook doesn't count, so count one, two. This chain right here, I'm going to turn this towards me and then go in the back ridge of that chain and then yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. That is a single crochet. So we're gonna do that all the way across this chain until we get to the very last chain. In the last chain, we are going to put three single crochets and we are actually going to work on the opposite end of our foundation chain. And I'll show you that when I get there. So just single crochet across and I'll meet you back here when I have one chain left. Alright, I have one chain left here. 
I am going to put three single crochets in that last chain. So go in there, just like that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, there's one, go back in for two, and three, oh sorry my hand's in the front, <laughs> three, there we go. So there's three single crochets in that last chain. Now what I'm going to do is flip this over like this, and we are going to work along this other side of our foundation chain. So we worked three single crochets in this one, so skipped over to this one right here, go in, and what I'm going to do is work over the top of this strand so I can sew it in as I go, and yarn over, pull through, working over the top of this straggler here, and then single crochet. Okay, and we're just going to single crochet across here until we have one stitch left. So just go across in each, they look like stitches because I worked in the back ridge, so they look like stitches now. And I'm just single crocheting in each one. And when I have one stitch left, I will come back here and show you what to do in there and then we can go on to round two. Alright, I have this one stitch left right here, and you can see our very first stitch right here was worked into there. So we are going to make it equal to this opposite side here, where there's three single crochets in that last chain. We're going to put two single crochets in this last stitch, because there's one in there already. So we're going to put two single crochets in the last stitch here. So one and two. So basically each end, this end has three single crochets in it and this opposite end has three single crochets in it as well. But each in between just has one in there. Okay, so this is what round one looks like. I am going to stick a stitch marker here. This is just an extra piece of yarn to mark my rounds, but you can use a legit stitch marker or just um, remember that this side is the beginning of your round because we're going to work in continuous rounds now. And we are going to be working into the stitch. We're not working, we're usually for a single crochet, we work in the top of the stitch like this. But for these stitches, because I want the knit type of look, we're going to work in here, right in between this V here, so right in there, okay? So you can see in each stitch, I'll go over here, so you can see each stitch has like a little um, two vertical lines, see these two vertical lines here and here? We're going to go in between them into the stitch. Can you see that? <laughs> I just want to make sure you can see that. Right in there, in there, in there. So I'm going to show you with my hook now. I'm going to put my stitch marker in the beginning here to mark my round. And then I'm going to go into this very first stitch. And we're not increasing or doing anything anymore. We're just working one single crochet in each stitch around for round two. So I tend to just kind of hook the first vertical line, you can see the two vertical lines here, so I'm going to hook in the middle of them like that and go through the stitch, okay, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops, okay, this next stitch here, you can see this line and this line here, okay, we're going to go in between, and again, I like to just like kind of hook my hook like this around that first one and kind of jab it in then yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, I'll show you again. This next stitch, going into the actual, between the two vertical lines, pull up like that, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so it's worked in the actual stitch and not at the top of the stitch. So again, next stitch is right here. Okay, so you can see this vertical line and this vertical line. We're going to go in between them and then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and I know it's kind of difficult to see it because this is a variegated, like a colorful type of yarn, not a plain yarn color. So 
I hope you're able to see that, but it looks like it's working for me, so look at that. Right inside the stitch, you're an over pull through too. Okay? So do that all the way around. There's no increasing, no decreasing, none of that. Like, literally just put one in each stitch around. Even when you get over here, just put one in each one of these. Do not put three or anything like that. <laughs> Round one was the only one that we put three in um, that end. So just put one single crochet into the stitch, into each of the stitches around. So again, no increasing or anything. Just like this, into the stitch, not at the top of the stitch, into the middle of the stitch. And I'll do that and then I'll come back after round two. All right, back to the beginning here. I just single crocheted one single crochet in each stitch around. As you can see, there's no increases or anything. So that is the pattern. We are just going to move our stitch marker up, work into the stitch. Okay, so you can see our first stitch is right here. So we're just working into the single crochet, not at the top of the stitch, but between the two vertical lines. And we're just single crocheting around. So just repeat round two, basically. <laughs> just single crochet in the middle of the stitch and it will create this lovely, almost knit looking type of pattern. And we are just going to do that for 35 rounds, um, just working in continuous rounds. You can do more or less, depending on how big your tablet or book is. I'm going to end on round 35, and when I am finished, I will come back, show you what to do next, and we'll add a button to our book sleeve. Alright, I just finished round 35, so this is what your piece should look like, and working into the stitch gives this really nice, almost knit type of look, but this is all crochet, single crochet, so this is what my uh, book sleeve looks like now, and uh, like I said, you can do more rounds um, if you want to, to continue this um, to be longer or wider, however you want it to be but um, my book will fit in here. I'll show you. I didn't fasten off yet because I have been like sticking my book in here and then um, kind of going more and more as I saw that I needed to go like longer or whatever. So you can see the book fits nicely and it even covers the spine a little bit. So uh, I mean this is like a typical size novel that I would read, so I like this, or I could fit my Kindle in here as well. So now I'm just going to fasten this off and add a button, and we'll be finished. So that was a really simple project. So what I'm going to do is just slip stitch into this next stitch. I'm going to work in the top of the stitch right there. Just going into the top of the stitch, yarn over, pull through and through, and then chain one. We're going to cut our yarn and pull it all the way through and pull tight. Then you can grab a yarn needle. There we go. Yarn your needle with this uh, little strand that we just cut. And sew in your end. Sorry, that yarn needle is bent. <laughs> so I'm going to use this yarn needle. And. We're just going to yarn our needle if we can. There we go. And then go underneath the stitches into the inside here. And just sew in that end. Very simple. And I like to go back and forth. And then pull, stretch it, cut your extra. And it's hidden. Lovely. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what that looks like. So now I'm just going to make a loop and a button. So what I'm going to do first is actually add the button first and then I'll create the loop just because I want to make sure that the loop will fit around the button. And I have these cute little buttons. This is from the Etsy shop Would Be Fancy. 
and I'm just going to stick it right here. I'm going to grab a smaller needle. Hopefully I can get my yarn through the hole of this needle. Let's try. Or you can use regular thread if you want to, but I'm just going to use this yarn. And this is more of a sewing needle because the holes of this button are pretty small. But you can find a button that you like and that you can uh, fit your needle through. And then I'm going to go from the inside and going through just like that. And then go to the other side through just like that. And then I'm going to tie these two strands in a knot on the inside. Just like that. It's perfect. Looks good to me. And then we can take this sewing needle off, grab a yarn needle, a bigger needle, yarn our needle with those both of those strands and then sew them in underneath the stitches of this piece. Stretch it out and cut extra. So there is the button. Awesome. Looks good. So now I'm going to make a loop. So I'm going to start on the back side. We're going to start on this side here. We're not going to work on this side. We're just going to make a loop on this back side. But we're going to go right behind this right here. So probably right around here. Just kind of eyeball it, really. So I'm going to go here into this stitch. Hook on my yarn, pull it through, and we are going to make a chain. Now this is um, really creator's choice, however you want to make your chain, just yarn over, pull through, and just make the chain as long as you need to, to make the loop that will fit around your piece here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've chained ten. I'm going to pull this out, see if it'll wrap around and come through and still be sewn to this side. And it works pretty well. So I'll just have to chain ten. I'll chain eleven just to be safe. <laughs> and then cut this yarn. Actually, you can slip stitch, sorry. You can slip stitch to this side, this next stitch here. Okay. So go in, pull through and through. Then you can chain one if you want to. Then cut your yarn, pull it all the way through, and pull tight. Okay, so there's your loop. We have to sew in these ends here. So let me grab my handy dandy yarn needle. Take this end. Yarn my needle. Okay, I'm going to come back around here and then I'm going to go through some stitches on, your, on the inside here. Okay, just like that. And cut any extra and then do the same thing for that side right here. Just yarn your needle and sew it. And that's basically it. That's the book sleeve. So like I said though, you can make as many rounds or rows as you need to to make it fit the book or the tablet that you are working with or putting in here. And this would be a great gift for a friend who loves to read or just loves to um, use a tablet. And the nice softness of this will Build nice and not scratch any screens or anything. But there it is. You can flip this on there. Just like that. How cool. So you can stick your book 
inside and then keep it nice and safe and um, free from scratches. I have to stretch this out a little bit. This book is a little tiny, but or a little bit bigger. But um, I have actually like smaller books that I would probably use in this one, or my my Kindle works really well in here. But it's in the other room, so I'm not gonna. Sh I'll show you in pictures how the Kindle fits in here. But there it is. Just fill that with the book, and then button it up, and there it is. How lovely. Thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this lovely book sleeve only using one skein of yarn, which is awesome. Please let me know if you make this and if you do share photos on our Facebook page or on our Facebook group, Yarn Utopia World on Facebook. Make sure you join that group, answer the three initial questions, and then you'll be in the group and we can share all of our crochet inspiration with each other. Thank you to Red Heart Yarns and Yarn Inspiration for providing this hopscotch yarn for this project today. Thanks to my dad who's over my shoulder who's filming this tutorial and posting it up on YouTube for everybody <laughs> to watch. And thanks to you for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you did, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Happy hooking!